Um, tell me this. You've bought um, lots and lots of uh, used horns previously. Right. What criteria do you use to actually start buying a used horn? Like, do you, uh, does it have to be in working order and time in which you actually get it? Or do you I, I work through to, it sometimes? I'll tell you what. If you buy them online on the Internet, it's very, you're, you're really taking a risk. So you want to make sure you get those at a good price. How many horns do you have? Just, to, just I as have a uh, approximately 50 saxophones, 10 clarinets. Um, you know, I have uh, uh, flute, trumpet, that sort of thing. But most the big collection is in saxes, where I expand a long time period. Most of my other stuff's modern. But what and you for have, and for video's sake, real quick, also right. just to just to legitimize that you actually know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you have about 50 saxophones. We're not talking junk at all. You have no, no, no they're junk. All pro line horns. And I've seen I've seen the pictures, but I right. haven't been to your house right. yet. But holy cow! Uh, some of, <laughs> some of, some of the horns that I have in King saxophones, I have the King Zephyr Zephyr Special and Super 20 horns. Sure. Those are all pro horns. I have the uh, old con portraits, which are very old, were in silver gold plate. I have, um, and they were called Chewberry horns, some people, because a guy named Chewberry made them famous. Um, and I have a lot of the 6Ms and 10Ms. In, uh, in Bisher, uh, B, that's spelled B-U-E-S-C-H-E-R, I have um, the Busher 400s and I have the, uh, the uh, Aristocrats, which were their top horns. And also you got to understand what years they are. So you go by a lot by serial numbers of horns. Sure. What, what, so that tells you what vintage they were because they had differing uh, quality control. And, and toward the end of most of the runs, they started just making kids' uh, instruments and they would use the same uh, name. So a Busher, Aristocrat or Busher 400 that was made in the 60s, for instance, is really a student line horn. Sure, sure. So you got to know your stuff and then you look and make sure that it, has, it looks like it has all the parts. You know, if I'm just buying somebody from somebody I don't know on the internet, I will just pay a min more minimal price. Sure. But if you're going through Wichita Band Instruments, uh, Charles Fail Music, Sax Gourmet, Sax Quest, Sax Quest, the people that uh, the people that are featured magazines and that I've known for a long time, personal relationships. I've been to their shops. You've been to Tenor Madness before in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So so anyway, I you know I bought some of my most expensive things. Like I have a Zephyr Special Tenor that is absolutely flawless, beautiful. I bought from Wichita Band Instruments. I've got, I teamed up with a guy named Charles Fail. He's no longer in business, but him and his son used to run a, a shop, and they also did vintage horns, and I've probably bought half of my horns from him. Sure. So what are like three things that you would say that you look for in a horn to ensure the fact that you're not getting a, a lemon, so to speak? Well, look at it as good as you can. Again, be very, very careful if you're just buying off the internet, because many times that stuff doesn't pan out. And uh, But I would make sure, first of all, hopefully you could buy from a reputable dealer sure. that you have a relationship with. If you can't do that, then you, you just realize you're taking a risk and, and maybe you could miss some good buys, but at the same time, you're, you're probably better off to just pay lower. Like I have some horns there where I bought off the internet for four or $500, and I know they're worth at least a thousand bucks, but I, but I look and make sure uh, as much as I can that the pieces are there, they have the right engravings, they have the right serial numbers for those, for the rest of the horn, it looks right. right with that serial number range and that sort of thing. So. Well, you're clearly a real investor, though. Most people I see that are doing stuff like this can act like day traders for, like, stocks. So right, right, trying right. to no, grab I've, something I've, quick and get no, a good No, the deal. only thing I've done, and I've let go of a, a few good horns I wish I wouldn't have. I'll trade once in a while to trade up or trade different. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there's a couple horns. There's a Con uh, Conqueror Alto Sax, which uh, was an up. It was a step up even from the professional line that I would give anything to have back again. But... <laughs> At the time, I thought I wanted something different, so you'll make a couple of those mistakes and, and realize, you know, it's not a perfect art.